All right, I don't know about you, but everywhere I look in my TikTok, in my IG Reels, in my YouTube Shorts, I'm seeing this title that says, November 1st, BRICS currency changeover and I'm trying to figure out what the heck is that what what what's going on so what I did I did a little bit of research so I could figure out exactly what it is what's going on and how it's going to affect you and I so if you want to know what's going on keep on watching because I got the scoop for you And thank you for joining me at the Financial Spotlight. I'm Chantrell and I'm here to give you financial tips and tricks that are going to help you on your road to know your money. And today I am talking about the November 1st BRICS Currency Exchange. And what we're going to do is unpack it. I'm going to tell you exactly what BRICS stands for. I'm going to tell you what it's all about all of the countries that are involved. And then I'm going to talk about the pros and cons and the icing on the cake is going to be what does it mean to you and I? Why should we even care about this? All right, so let's get started. First, let's talk about what BRICS is. BRICS is the joining or the unification of countries that are Brazil, the B, Russia, the R, India, the I, C is China, and S is South Africa. Now, those are the current countries in this, but they're trying to also get a few other countries to join them in 2024. So let me read off those names. That's Saudi Arabia, Iran, Ethiopia, Egypt, Argentina, and United Arab Emirates. Now, when they join forces together, they are going to be putting together a currency that is called the BRIC. The brick is going to be the money or that they use basically to trade with each other. So instead of using the almighty dollar, the US dollar to back up their trades, they're going to use the brick to do their trading. Now that is basically de-dollarizing. So they're trying to lessen the the impact of the US dollar. Basically, they want to reduce the amount of leverage that the US has in all of the different countries and their economies because of the dollar that we have. Now, when they do this, this is going to be a big change for the US. Those things will affect us but let me explain how they're going to affect us. All right, so when I was listening to all these videos talking about how our dollar is gonna be worth less and that my paycheck is not gonna be worth as much as it usually is, I was trying to figure out, well, how or why, why not? So those things are, this de-dollarization is going to affect us in a couple of ways. As a US nation, we will not be able to have the access to the weapon power that we were able to get from other countries okay i understand that but other things are going to be like less access to capital that's less access to money higher borrowing costs so that means interest rates are going to go up so interest rates on mortgages car loans personal loans student loans whatever loans and and different borrowing money that you're trying to purchase or use interest rates are going to go up. Also, the stock market values are going to go down. And we're going to have higher imports. So they're going to be more expensive, especially from those BRICS companies. Remember, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Whatever we get from those countries and then the other countries that they're gonna add into there, those imports are going to be more expensive once they get this currency in the works. So let's go to the pros of this. And some people are probably like, Shetra, how are they gonna be pros in de-dollarizing our dollar? Well, <laughs> now hear me out, you guys, okay? 
don't fault me for this. This is my own opinion. I did not get this from an economist. I am not an economist. I am also not an investment banker or any of the sort. This is just my own viewpoint, my own opinion of what could happen in a positive light for the U.S. And this could really happen for us. Just okay. So just hear me out. Just, just listen. First... There will be more made in the U.S. items. So remember how we're always getting our clothes and different things from other countries. Maybe people will actually start making their clothing or other items, shoes, I don't know, what other, other products here in the U.S. That wouldn't be so bad, would it? Okay, next, food and other resources like that will be grown here in the U.S., we can get our food here locally or, you know, grown here in the U.S. And then we wouldn't have to go out of the country to get those types of food. Also, less offshore trades. So we will do more trading or um, bartering or using the resources that we have here in America as opposed to and in other countries that are not in that um, that unification and we will use those items as opposed to getting the ones from the people in the BRICS or the countries in the BRICS. There will be less offshore trades so that means that we won't be trading as much with people in other countries and we will use more things here in the United States or with other countries that are not in the BRICS united front. And then there will be more US to US business camaraderie, more thinking of the US customer, uh, people really considering each other here in the United States and not necessarily just offshore or internationally, but they will focus on the people and the consumers that are here in the United States. All right, now I said all of that stuff about how the pros and cons, how it's going to affect the U.S., what de-dollarization is, the BRICS and everything. So now let's get into the good stuff. How is that going to affect you and I? What is it going to do for me and what should I do? Well, the way it's going to affect you and I, it's already started. Um, there's an inflation. So things are going up in price. I also mentioned interest rates are going to go up. So interest rates are going to go up. That does not only mean interest rates for purchasing, but then there's also interest rates in savings, right? So those are going to go up too. That's kind of a positive. So if you have money in a bank or if you have money in an IRA or if you have money in a CD, maybe you wanna keep them in there so that things will grow. Now, what am I gonna do or what are you going to do in this in these times if this occurs. So if the BRICS get their currency up and running, what are you supposed to do? First, I want you to not go out and purchase all types of items, especially not retail and things of that nature. Try to put your money more into things that are gonna last for a long time. Also, start your savings as soon as possible putting your money into mutual funds, into CD accounts, certificate of deposits, putting into high interest yield savings. Those type of things are going to help you in the long run. And just spend your money wisely. I would also suggest that you take some cash out and have some cash on hand just in case. Make sure that you have these things in your possession because you want to make sure that you cover your own butt. Then you need to diversify your money. What I mean by diversifying your money or diversifying your investments, put your money in various investments. It could be stocks, it could be bonds, it could be mutual funds, gold, silver, other precious metals, real estate, um, the currency, various currencies, offshore currencies, goods, assets, Anything that you feel that's going to build your money up, make sure that you invest in those things. And definitely try to invest in companies that have international operations. Alibaba 
is one of those companies. They are based in China and we all know that those have retail and they sell online. Investing in Alibaba is a good choice. Tesla, Tesla is here in the United States. However, they have operations in China. So that could be a good investment. Gazprom, which is an oil and gas company based in Russia, and a company named Vale, V-A-L-E, is a metals and mining company out of Brazil. And if all else fails and none of this stuff is something that you're interested in or that you even feel like trying to dabble and dibble and dabble and try to figure out which one to invest in, just put your money into the iShares MC, I'm sorry, MSCI Brick ETF. And their calling number is BKF. I will put that down in the description box below so that you can refer to those, the whole list, refer to all of those just in case you're willing to invest in those. And then before I end this video, I wanna point you to go ahead and watch this video right here next because it's going to talk to you about investing with only one dollar and that's going to help you today so go ahead and click on that video right now thanks for watching have a good one bye